Hello and welcome to the Monthly Marquee. I'm your host, Bart Levins, Director for the Hardin County Schools Performing Arts Center. Our first guest this month is Miss Annabeth Johnson, our PAC Kid Spotlight. Annabeth, thank you so much for being with us today. How are you? I'm good. Are you enjoying our, 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 our gray and dismal day in the limousine? Um, it's been fun, but rainy. But fun, but rainy. Exactly. <laughs> now, this is your first limousine ride, right? Yes. So what, what's your takeaway from, from being in the Skaggs limousine? Um, well, it's really big. Right? <laughs> it's a lot, of, a lot of room for three little people, yeah. right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, it's Skaggs is one of our sponsors for the Pack Kids Spotlight, so we thank them for their support. And let's talk just a little bit about your experiences at the Performing Arts Center. The very first thing that you did at the Performing Arts Center, what was that? Um, cats. cats. It was um, Youth Theater of Hardin County. Um, it was, yeah, Cats. And what did you do in Cats? Um, well, I was a cat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could have figured that. Um, I, I, my character's name was um, Jemima, and she was kind of like, she was like the kitten, I guess. That's she was kind of what I think one. of her yeah. as, too, yeah. And you got to sing one of the big numbers from the show, right? Mm -hmm. Memories? Yeah. yeah. Is it memory or memories? I always get that confused. Um, I think it's memory, Okay. But yeah. I'm not sure. And when you get to my age, then it's memories. <laughs> at your age, it's memory. No, and wonderful, wonderful experience, yeah? Yes. How, what was it like playing an animal? Um, it was actually, I thought it was a lot easier than playing, like, a human. I don't know. <laughs> Why do you think that is? Um, I don't know. It's just... I don't know. My director was like, go on stage and act like you're a cat. And you're just like, I don't know. Sometimes just... I think it's easier to play something that's so far removed from us mm -hmm. that, you know, it, it's, it, it, it gets rid of all of those obstacles. Yeah. You know. Uh, and then what did you do after Cats? Um, I was in Sound of Music. Now, see, and that was our first time to work together. Yes. And what was that experience like? Um, that was one of my favorites, I think, um, just because it was like... I got to work with a lot of people that were close to my age and a lot of people that were older than me. Mm -hmm. So it was just, it was a good mix. I, I think of Sound of Music as almost being like the Brady Bunch a little bit. It was like we <laughs> formed our own family yeah. from all of these different mm -hmm. families. Mm -hmm. And you guys have still kind of remained close since yeah. then, haven't you? All mm -hmm. you guys who were the Von Trapp kids. Mm -hmm. And then you did some Missoula Children's Theater? Um, yes, I was in Snow White and Treasure Island. And those were both really fun. So how does, what is, what's your takeaway from Missoula Children's Theater that's different than the other shows that you've done at the PAC? Um, it's different for me because um, you're only with the people for a week. So you don't get, you don't build the same relationships that you do. Um, but it's still good, like... You learn good skills through yeah. it and stuff. I so. think Missoula is a really great, like... Uh, training ground. Mm -hmm. It's a good test. Um, I always tell parents with Missoula, um, this is a lot of work and it's a huge commitment, but it's only one week. Mm -hmm. You could survive yeah. anything for one week. Yeah. And if the kid decides they're not interested, then you're not committed for two right. or three months at a time like mm -hmm. you are with the show. But if, you, if they do enjoy it, and most of them do enjoy <laughs> it, then, then we got them hooked, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, what else have you done at the PAC? Um, I've been in, I was in Mary Poppins after Sound of Music, and then I was in Little Mermaid, and then The Nutcracker, um, and then Thoroughly Modern Millie um, this past summer, and now Hunchback. Right, so. and what do you, wh how do you, uh, why do you keep coming back? What do you get from these experiences? Um, well, like I said, I love the people, and I, just, I love performing, and I love that I can go to the pack and I can just be myself and no one will like judge me. And I think that's really interesting because I think when people think about performing, I think they think a lot like cats mm -hmm. and that it's not about being yourself, it's about being something or someone mm -hmm. else. But it's kind of both mm -hmm. in a way, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're getting to share your love of theater with other people who have that same enthusiasm, right? Yeah. And how do you feel you've, you've grown as a person? over the years? Um, I mean, when you think of yourself and who you were when you did Cats is to compared to who you are now and doing Hunchback, how have, how have you grown? Well, I feel like going into Cats, I, 
I just love to sing, so I thought I would try something new. And I was kind of shy at first to um, kind of act out, but now it's a lot easier for me, and it's still a challenge, but I think that I've just grown in like being able to put myself out there more. Do you think that your experiences in theater have helped you in school? Yeah. In what because, way? Because um, they, it just teaches me that like I have to work hard and I can't like not do something because I don't feel like it. I I have to do it anyway, and so that really helps me with like schoolwork and stuff. So it's um, the word responsibility yeah. comes to mind. Mm -hmm. it, it's made you realize that you you are responsible. Mm -hmm. for yourself mm -hmm. and your actions and the things that you do and that if you don't if you slack off mm -hmm. that there's repercussions right not just yeah. for you but for those around you because mm -hmm. whatever we're doing in life you know it's one thing we were talking about earlier today um you may not be in sports uh but we're all we're all part of a team whether mm -hmm. we're working in a classroom or on a play or whatever and it, the the end product is only as strong as its weakest link. And yeah. you don't want to be that weak link, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> so what's next for you? What, what do you have, what do you, you're a freshman now at E-Town. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and what kind of things do you want to get involved with now that you're in high school? Um, I want to stick with musical theater as much as I can. And um, I'm in student council at school, mm -hmm. which is something, I don't, well, I mean, I just started it, so yeah. <laughs> I'm really excited to help, like, lead my school, I guess, in a way. So I'm involved with that, and I dance at the Dance Center of Elizabethtown, and that's basically it. <laughs> so tell me more about Student Council. How did that come about? Um, well, applications, on the, on the first week of school, they were like, pick up applications. And so yeah. I, I went and picked one up, and um, it's kind of like where you can – help make decisions in school and you can help plan stuff and it's really fun and you can just like have an opinion and you can share it and yeah. I think so you may fun. have found a new team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what are you thinking you want to do with your life after? I know you're just a freshman. And you could change your mind. So we're not going to like play this back again in five years to say, nope, nope, you said you wanted to do this. But if, if you had your, your, your druthers, as we, as we old folks say, what, what is it you'd like to do with your life? Um, I'd like to go into like musical theater. I don't know where I want to go to college or anything. But sure, what's well, early for all of those kind yeah. of decisions? But this, this gives you a lot of joy. Mm -hmm. I know, I know. And it's it's a pleasure working with you. And we're working on Hunchback of Notre Dame yes. right now. Mm -hmm. And by the time this airs, some of the audience may have come to see Hunchback mm -hmm. or be thinking about Hunchback. Uh, explain your, your part of this production. Um, well, I look at my character as like, well, I play a lot of different people, I guess. Yeah. Um, I'm a gargoyle in a few scenes, and I'm... And my other character, I look at it as someone who goes on a journey through, like, um, just, like, finding who they are and stuff. And by the end, I feel like my character is just, like, grown into being, like, a nice person, I guess. Well, you know, and that's it, because we really haven't talked about it being a journey. But right. that's definitely how I mm -hmm. feel about your character yeah. and many of the characters in the show. They're part of the chorus, mm -hmm. and they're in the background, but they have this story to tell. Mm -hmm. And through telling this story of the hunchback, uh, it changes them. Yeah. Yeah. And and I, I totally feel the same way about it. And I, th and I, I think, what do you think the audiences are going to take away from it? Um, well, I think they're going to cry a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's, it's very it's emotional. It's really sad, yeah. Um, but I hope that they just take away from it just to be nice to everyone and just to, like, know that, like, everyone deserves to, like, be loved yeah. and stuff. Everyone and so, deserves that. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Annabeth, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you spending the day with us. Yes, thank you. Next up on the Monthly Marquee is Ms. Carrie Lewis, Vice President of the Board of Directors for the Hardin County Playhouse. Hello, how are you? I'm fine. How are you doing? You and I have been working together more this month than we ever have yes, before. Exactly. Uh, you're with Sign Makers, and you've been really, really helpful with our production of Hunchback of Notre Dame coming up. Thank Always. you so much for oh, all welcome. of your efforts on that. Um, and But we're here to talk about Hardin County Playhouse. Right. Now, how long have you been involved with the Playhouse? 
I think about 10 years. That's what I was thinking as yeah. well. I yeah. was just a child then. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you have going on right now? Uh, right now, we're in the midst of rehearsals and production for Night of the Living Dead. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something I can seriously identify with. Oh. I feel that way most of the time, <laughs> at least before coffee. But uh, Morning of the Living Dead, for sure. Yes, yes, yes. Before coffee, before makeup, yes, I could do this. <laughs> Um, but actually, this is going to be directed by Ron Blair, and this is based upon the 1968 film by George Romero. And Ron actually knew George and several of the people that were in the film, as many, as well as many of the sequels. So this is going to be kind of a real personal venture for him. It, yeah, yeah, it's 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 very close to his heart. I know. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And that'll be in October. Yes, it'll be in October. And uh, what a great way to to get into the Halloween spirit. Yes, absolutely. And I think a lot of people just love zombies. And I well, the zombie walk here is is insane. Yes. I mean, what I, insane? I, it's wonderfully insane. Wonderfully insane. Yeah, yeah. it's a really fun weekend. It's a it's a lot of fun, and and this particular production is going to be a real big first step into the modern horror genre for you guys. Yeah. For Hardin County Playhouse, and you've done mystery, you've done yes. suspense, and, and comedy, and Agatha Christie kind of things right, for Halloween. Right. But this is just. Flat out this going is, there. This is going to be a little different. Ron has has put together some original audio trailers and some some radio broadcasts that's going to lead into like a pre-show telling the audience kind what they're set about the to scene see. And, yes. and pull them into the time period. Yes, so. absolutely. So it's going to be a, a little extra creepy. Cool. So we've got some really good makeup artists and we've got some wonderful talent and they've been practicing and working on this. And I think it's going to be a really different and very fun production for Hardin County Playhouse. Well, and I was talking to, and I can't remember the student I was talking to. There's a, there's a student that I've worked with who is in the production. And her parents, for the very first time ever, are doing a production. Because yes. at they, you've got not only the cast for the show, but then you have uh, these other people as zombies right. wandering around. And her parents wanted to be zombies. Absolutely. So they're getting to do a show together for the very first time, which was, you know, I always say you can be a grandparent and you can watch your grandson play football, but you may not be able to experience that with them. And that's right. one of the wonderful things about the performing arts right. is a grandpa grandfather and a grandson can play in a band together. They can do right. a show together. They can right. sing in a choir together. Right. And so it's one of those wonderful things that's so great about community yes. theater and pulling Well, I was together. actually able to uh, work with two of my grandsons several years ago in Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. And that was a wonderful experience. Some, of the, yeah, some I, of the best memories I have of my dad absolutely. are getting to do things with him. Like yes, that. because theater is a different experience. It's a very emotional experience because you're putting so much of yourself into it and you get involved in the story and with the other cast and it, it becomes like a family of yeah. sorts. It's very, it's a very wonderful, wonderfully addictive mm -hmm. uh, thing. That's why I, I just can't help myself. I just love theater. So <laughs> it's great. Well, we were talking about uh, uh, Night of the Living Dead uh, launching into the Halloween season. Mm -hmm. You're also going to have a fall festival coming yes, up Yes, we are. We're going to have, it's going to be October 14th. It's going to be a street clothes festival all day long. We are going to have entertainment on stage all day long. On stage at the Playhouse? No, right there on the square. On the square. We're going to bring the stage to the square. We're going to have a DJ all day and an MC, and we're going to be, you know, showing, showcasing our local talents, some dance groups, some singing groups, some acoustic groups, uh, hopefully some little dramatic excerpts from plays and so forth. Something for the whole family all day long. We're going to have a zombie walk and a thriller flash mob. And we're going to be celebrating the arts. We've got a lot of artists and vendors coming to this mm. festival because um, we, we really want to emphasize how much the arts really enrich our lives, whether we actually are aware of it or not. Mm. And we want to give honor to all those particular types of arts. Yeah. So. Yeah. And when again is that? This is Saturday, October 14th from 10 to 7. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. And what else have you got coming up at the Playhouse? We've got Heroicus. Heroicus, we, we premiered that in April, and that is an original work uh, written and directed by uh, Jeff Curtis. And this particular time, it's going to be produced by Ron Blair also, mm -hmm. and we're going to put it on stage at the State Theater. We've got two uh, 
productions during the day for our school children and then we're going to have two evening performances as well for the general public and this was so very well received and it's so nice to have an original work and the music and and the wonderful acting we're bringing back most of the cast from the april premiere but we're going to have a few some new fresh folks yes yeah, well. some fresh yeah. talent for people who couldn't commit to this latest production. But, and and uh, when is that again? Okay, we've got the daytime performances on November 3rd for the schools, and then we have 7 p.m. productions on the evenings of the 3rd and the 4th. Gotcha. And we will have that on our Facebook page, and it will be announced in other places as well, just to remind folks. Sure, so. and, and we've, we've, uh, we've talked about Herokas several times mm -hmm. on the show. Mm -hmm. What's, what is your take on Herokas? What is this? Oh, well, it is, it is a wonderful, imaginative little jaunt. Uh, as a father and daughter are playing little games, the, the characters kind of come to life and they become involved in a real escapade with the story. It becomes a part of their actual experience. So it's got a lot of wonderful life lessons in it, a lot of great parables, um, and it's, it's just a wonderfully imaginative, fun story and leaves you feeling very good. Yeah, I, I was trying to describe it to someone the other day, and uh, it's it's a father and daughter journey like the Wizard of Oz yes. in a lot of respects. Yes. Anybody who respects. loves Wizard of Oz would, right. would, would really oh, yes. pick up on this. Or anyone who ever had action figures growing up oh, okay. would, would and just... And who, who didn't? Exactly. <laughs> I want to know who didn't. <laughs> they should have. Right, they right. So, and this, is, this was just really fun. I know that when I got to see it, I was very amazed at the performances and at the story. and how you forget how important play is. The play. It is about play. You're, no, that, that really is the truth. Mm -hmm. it, the yes. importance of play as, as a tool for discovery, a tool for growth, and a tool to bring us together. Right. Yeah. And to yeah. teach, you know, a certain type of ethics yeah. Yeah, along yeah, yeah. the way, you know, through pretend. Yeah. So, and I think a lot of times today we don't have enough imagination, which is another reason why I love the arts and why I love theater, because so many things are so technical that we've lost our imagination. And I think of my own experience with my children and my son, once he got involved in a lot of the video games and stuff, mm. it was like his imaginary playmates all disappeared. Mm. And those were fun. We enjoyed those playmates, P and I together. So this is, this is going to be a great production. Well, we're, we're, we're entering a new age of uh, development as a country where uh, the technological jobs are going to be increasingly, right. increasing more and more. And we're going to need more and more button pushers and less and less uh, physical labor right. type jobs. But at the same time, all of that technical work is based upon the creative engineering exactly. of other people. So we, the technical aspect of, and teaching the next generation of workers technologically is important, but it is also essential that we are training the next creative exactly. people to take us to the next level. Well, technology, technology. wouldn't exist without creativity exactly. and yeah. without imagination. Because if you can imagine it, the technology allows you to do it. Yes, yeah. And, and what you can do, just like in theater, with lights and with music and special effects and different things, it takes the imagination. You can, anybody can work those buttons and flip right. those switches, but you've got to have the vision. Yeah. And that's where the creativity comes Oh, yeah, comes absolutely. In. absolutely. And, and, and you have another show before we go. I just want really quick, um, after Night of the Living Dead, you have auditions coming right. up for your Christmas show. Yeah. Maybe, maybe the Christmas story of all time. Right. A Christmas, Christmas story. story. A yes. Christmas story. Absolutely. And that's going to be in December, of course. And uh, hopefully a lot of folks will come out and audition for that. You know, I think a lot of people don't realize how much fun it can be. And how in community theater, you know, we have volunteers from all walks of life, all ages. And it's a, it's a wonderful experience. If you haven't tried it, I, I invite invite you to try to well, and the Christmas story is a really great one to mm -hmm. get involved in yes. because again it's a great show uh, there are roles for adults and for children so it's right. a great opportunity to do something with another member of yes. your family and it's also based upon the movie A Christmas Story with Darren McGavin and the leg lamp and yes. the tongue <laughs> stuck to the lamp post so this is a, something that we're familiar with right. you don't have to learn a funny accent no. you just have to go out there and relive your right. memories of this movie 
at the audition. Exactly. So this is this is a no brainer audition. Go and right. have fun. Right. Live live your favorite moments from the film, <laughs> and maybe you get cast. Right. Exactly. And it would be a great experience. Yeah. So. I think everybody should try it. Well, Carrie, that wraps it up. Thank you so much for your time, ma'am. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. And again, we want to thank Carrie Lewis from the Hardin County Playhouse. And if you want to learn more about everything happening at Hardin County Playhouse, go to the website, hardincountyplayhouse.com. Next on our show is Mr. Zach Humphrey from the State Theater. Zach, how are you, sir? Doing great. Thanks for having me. So uh, we're having just got through talking to Carrie. I, I'm in the Halloween spirit, but before yes. we get into everything you have going on in October, yep. let's do just a little refresher on Sawyer Brown. Well, Sawyer Brown was a great performance. Huge crowd. Um, sold out, really. I mean, we had a couple single seats around, but man, it was... Around 630 people came to watch that show, so it was it was a great show. Now, when you have a group like Sawyer Brown and they do so well, um, do, you, do you immediately go, when can I get them back, or you just look for something in the same vein? Well, you know, the pace that the, the state theater is going, we don't try to do any monotony, you know, uh, bringing everybody back year after year, sure. which a lot of acts out there, you know, people here would in Orange County do they that. would yeah. love to pay again to see them because they're just great, great, great acts. Uh, we're really looking for diversity, so we want to mix it up every or give something new that we haven't tried before. But yeah, you know, groups like Sawyer Brown, Shenandoah, Exile, Kentucky Headhunters, yeah, we could have them back every year. <laughs> They're great. We love to have them. We love sold out crowds too. So yeah, exactly. The exactly. More, the more popcorn. Absolutely. Right. And, and what else you got going on in September? Well, we're, we're really kind of slow in the middle of September, but towards the end, September 23rd, we've got the Classic Rock Experience. Now, this is going to be on the same night as the, um, the wine event at Freeman oh. Lake, but kind of two different uh, things. So you could probably try both. Um, so we've got the Classic Rock Experience, which is going to be a, a big tribute show to all 70s arena rock. So oh, okay. Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd and Van Halen and all the good ones. So <laughs> it's going to be a fun show. And, and that'll be the end of September. And then we really won't do much until beginning October. We've got John Conley's going to return this year. Okay. He'll be on no Thursday, Thursday, October 5th. He'll be returning to the State Theater. Um, tickets are on sale now, so you know people can go out and get those. those will, that'd be a great show. He, well, he and and John is one of those people, you know... Um, you, you meet people in the business, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes their offstage personality doesn't match their onstage personality. Yeah. John, it, humble, very the John humble you man. see on stage is the John you see backstage. Yep. He's just the sweetest, most wonderful yeah. person to work with. Just a kind soul. He knows soul. a lot of people in our area. Oh, yeah. He's got grew a lot up of this history. Way. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's a great show. And, and last year we had a lot of fun. It was almost a sold out show. And, and you know, to do it on a Thursday night, people were like, well, that's different. You know, the state theater doesn't do a lot on mm -hmm. Thursday nights. But we're kind of moving in that direction to where weekdays are. are you got to fill those nights because you know, everybody's. Poss possibilities downtown now. So we're willing to try just about everything and, and see what works and see what doesn't. So sure. we're really looking forward to that. Uh, the next night, actually, October 6th, which is a Friday night, we've got a show called Rhythm Nation. Uh, William Jordan Jr. and Rhythm Nation are be coming from Las Vegas mm. uh, to E Town. And William Jordan Jr. is a Elizabethtown graduate of '81, I believe. Okay. And uh, great, talented musician. He's been in Las Vegas for years now, and is going to bring his soul and R&B show to the State Theater with his group of friends. And we're really looking forward to that. So that'd be a fun night. Very cool. And tickets are also on sale now. They're 25, 20, and 15. So very reasonable, you know, to come downtown and, and watch a show and be a lot of fun. So. Cool. Now we're ready for the Halloween stuff. Halloween, right around the corner. Yeah, we've got a lot of movies planned. Uh, towards the uh, middle and end of October, we've got movies like Christine, uh, Friday the 13th, Halloween Town. I mean, it's going to be a fun ha Halloween season. I'm really looking forward to it. We'll also partner up with The Wolf. Um, mm -hmm. uh, every Halloween, they sponsor an event at the State Theater called Trunk or Treat. Yep. They'll fill the parking lot full of uh, sponsors and vendors and hand out candy, and then we'll do a free movie inside the theater so everybody can come down and enjoy all that fun. When you were talking about the two Stephen King movies that you're going to be showing in October, we talked about right before yeah. we, we, we started the taping, you're hoping you might be able to make some connections with the, with the what's the big event down at Pritchard? It's called uh, Night Risers. Right, Con, right. And that's going to be at Pritchard on the 28th, uh, really kind of an all weekend thing at Pritchard. Uh, the 28th, they'll have some actors from some of the Stephen King movies, and one of those being an actor from Christine. And we'll be playing Christine on Saturday the 28th, so we're hoping maybe we can get him to come that to the... That would be so fun to get that connection yeah, with that Yeah, get the event. car outside the theater, and everybody can kind of see that, and he can do a Q&A on stage, and that's just a lot of fun. You know, that doesn't happen every day that you get to see a, an actor from a very famous and creepy 
horror movie back in the day. So we did a we did a a, a sci-fi weekend with the State Theater back before you were mm -hmm. with them, and uh, showing all of the old Star Trek movies, and then followed up with a live video conference with Gene Roddenberry's son okay. Q and A there. Yeah. So anytime you can connect yeah. events from different spaces in our community, yeah. it makes it part of it more communal. Yeah, of and course. And make, just makes it a bigger event overall. That would be a great event to to bring back. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, the Night Risers is just continues to grow and yeah. grow. Yeah. yeah, every year. Uh, really looking forward to that. Should be a great event, and hopefully we can partner up and keep everybody downtown to experience all that Halloween fun. Cool. What do you have coming down on the horizon? Anything fantastic you can we're, give we're, us a hint about? We're looking at some good shows towards December. Um, I'm planning a big New Year's Eve event, actually. Okay. Have you done a New Year's Eve event? You did one last year, didn't you? Well, we didn't do one last year. No, we were actually dark on New Year's okay. Eve. Okay. Uh, the year before, there was kind of a, a gala That's what of I'm sorts, thinking of. a dinner. Yeah, um, this will actually be the first like concert in the theater to celebrate New Year's Eve, and you know, do a whole balloon drop, and and it just would be a lot of fun. So I've got a good act uh, set for that. But not and set to announce yet. I can not tell. Not set to announce yet. <laughs> No, very soon. So everybody will be very excited about that, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So. Is this going to be a champagne event? Yeah, it could oh, yeah. be. New we'll Year's Eve. Champagne. Yeah, it'd be Off a lot of fun. Yeah. So hopefully weather's good for us. You know, Kentucky weather, we might have two feet of snow, so who knows, but we're ready for it. So I'm excited to celebrate New Year's. And then as we get into 2018, uh, we've partnered again with the city of Elizabethtown to do some sponsored shows. Good. Um, That's been a really good partnership for you, to yeah. be able to bring in folks like Winona and yeah. Sawyer Brown. That, that makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of people don't realize, but without sponsors and the help from the city of Elizabethtown, the State Theater, it, it would be hard. We would struggle to, to do the things that we do. So that really helps us get a name for ourselves and um, to set us apart. You know, Central Kentucky, we're really the only area or, or State Theater, really, in this area. That, Who's doing that what you're doing. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. You can go to Frankfurt, and Franklin, Tennessee has a lot of good performances. But and Louisville, of course. And Louisville, yeah, of course. But and that's gas Louisville. money. Yeah, it is. So yeah. right here in town, you know. Locals can enjoy a lot of good entertainment. Well, and, and I don't think a, a lot of a lot of folks understand. You know, if you look at any national surveys and stuff, mm -hmm. ticket sales alone, and we're talking movies, concerts, mm -hmm. anything, and we all know how expensive tickets yeah. have gotten. Yeah, tickets alone, only sales alone covers fifty percent of the cost for doing it mm -hmm. for any event. Yeah, any event whatsoever. Yeah. it's concessions and partnerships. Yeah. that help keep those ticket prices down. Yeah. So without the help of corporate sponsorship and partnerships, yeah. those ticket prices are just going to keep going up. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, yeah, I know exactly just how thankful you are, as we are, for every business that comes on board to help us keep the prices low so everyone in our community can yeah. take advantage of yeah. these. It's really great. Yeah. It's great to see everybody come together and, and really watch the state theater grow, watch downtown grow, and, and we all reap the benefits from that. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Cool. Zach, how can we learn more about what's happening? We well, can find us online at historicstatetheater.org. Uh, call us on the phone at 270-234-8258 or just stop in our office to buy tickets or see uh, events that are coming up. Sounds great, man. Well, folks, that's going to wrap things up for another episode of The Monthly Marquee. I'm your host, Bart Lovins, director of the Hardin County Schools Performing Arts Center, and we will see you next month.